Hey, how's it going guys? Matt and Jack here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be showing you a $330 laptop that, well, can actually game. Let's talk about that. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you're interested, use the link down below and buy the Windows 10 Pro activation using our code TB20 to get 20% off. All you have to do to activate Windows 10 license is buy the key by using code TB20 and then throw the Windows 10 key into your Windows 10 activation on the system you wish to install it in and boom, you have activated Windows 10 and you no longer have to look at that horrible watermark in the bottom right corner. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the video, shall we? All right guys, so if you haven't noticed, we have really been making a lot of videos about laptops. So if you wanna check out any of those, hit the eye in the top right corner. We figured that budget laptops have gotten a lot better, especially since Ryzen has basically oversaturated the market market in terms of budget laptops, sub $500 laptops, and we really wanted to test this one out in particular because it comes with some specs that are really crazy for its price point. So the main components in this laptop that really make this thing amazing for $330 is you have a Ryzen 3500U, which is a four core, eight thread processor for $330. It also has the Ryzen graphics built into it. So we're hoping that we'll actually be able to get some decent FPS in some games. You get eight gigs of RAM off the bat, upgradable to 32 gigs, and you also get a 256 gigabyte SSD, and there's actually another slot for an M.2 as well. So if you're thinking about a laptop like this from a normal name brand, like an HP or something, you're probably looking anywhere between five to $600 for this laptop. And considering at Walmart, you get it for $329. It's honestly something that we are a little bit skeptical about, but we figured it would be worth making a video on. So how about we go ahead and unbox this thing and see what it's all about. So if you guys have watched our videos recently, we just made a video using a $320 or $350 laptop that featured a Ryzen 3 3200U, and that thing could play games, but it wasn't amazing. Now, with the 3500U and Vega 8 graphics, we expect to get much better results, especially at 1080p. So we have a little quick start guide right here, nothing too crazy. Jackson just threw the uh, charging brick to the floor. So this actually has one of the uh, like all-in-one charging bricks. It doesn't have the block in the middle. This goes straight into the wall, which it looks goofy as heck. It's very large, but hey, you know, I, I can't complain too much. The laptop itself, I mean, this is a really plain box. There's like, this is it. <laughs> I mean, we literally have a charger. We have a really small instruction book. Um, and then we have a quick start guide that tells you all like the uh, main features, what type of ports you have. So it does look like, actually, you know what? We'll show you guys the laptop itself, the ports that we got. We got the rose gold one because this, this is a present. So it's rose gold, you know, it's pretty. Um, you can get it in three colors at the moment. You can get black, rose gold, and I believe uh, just regular gold or beige. Um, but so the, the back on them all looks the same, I believe. It just has like an aluminum backing plate. And then the top is where you get the customization. Uh, you can see we have USB-C, we have USB 3, HDMI out, the charging port, and then we have really nothing in the front. Actually, that is a micro SD card reader, so that's kind of cool. And we have a headphone jack. So we have two more USB ports over here, and then we actually have the Ethernet jack right there as well. So the laptop itself is actually re relatively light. You can see it has a pretty slim design. It's kind of similar to the one that um, Matt got where it has like the slight curvature to it if you look closely, but it's not nearly as uh, curved as that one was. But let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got inside. Um, and kind of feel the hinges as well. The hinges, it feels pretty sturdy. It's not like super wobbly or anything. Very large touchpad, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we have a, a peel sticker right here that shows how to turn the lighting on and off, which I guess you just tap this twice and boom, there you go. We have a camera as well. It does come with the webcam that I read online is not the best, of course, I mean, it's a $330 laptop, but we'll give that a try. Keyboard itself, you have very large keys. This does have backlighting to it that turns on for about 10 seconds when you're using it, but of course it does turn off when you're not using it, which might drive some people nuts. And honestly, looking at this right now in first impressions, I like how much screen there is. There's not a major bezel at all in this thing. It looks like a modern laptop, and that's pretty impressive for something at this price point. Normally, you're looking at really cheap build quality. You're looking at something that's gonna be super thick with the bezels, uh, but it actually looks like a cool laptop. So um, we'll see if this thing actually powers on. You know, that's the big signing nice, factor here. Nice short cord. I did read that the backlighting is very weak. It almost doesn't even look like it. It does shine through the keys very dimly. Like I'm putting my hand over, you can kind of see the backlighting, but it is very weak backlighting. And of course they probably do that partially to save battery. But if you're one of those people who feels like you're constantly gonna be like typing in low lighting situations, this might not be the best one for you. 
But yeah, now that this thing is just gonna start up, what we're probably gonna do is go ahead and load it up with a couple of games, give you some uh, extra B-roll of what it looks like, and then test it and see exactly how it performs. And here comes Cortana, nice and loud. <laughs> So as you guys can see, uh, we got logged into this laptop, like literally, I mean, just made the account and everything, and it comes with very little bloatware. I had read this online that one of the cool parts about this is that you don't have a ton of bloatware. You just have the THX stuff, which that honestly comes with it. I mean, labeled right there because it's tuned by THX. Um, but I mean, yeah, overall though, it doesn't look like there's, you know, there's like nothing open besides Bluetooth and the Windows security. I wouldn't have task man. We're gonna see exactly uh, the specs of this thing to make sure everything is what it says it's gonna be. Um, and then we go to the performance tab. Just like your laptop. Just like my laptop, scream it at 100% to start because of uh, probably OneDrive. All right guys, so we got a few games downloaded, which was actually really fast. This thing has really good Wi-Fi capabilities, but we're gonna go ahead and launch a single player game of Minecraft. So I basically just loaded the game up and have it on stock settings, which actually was um, fancy and everything, but we did switch over to full screen. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what settings we got. But I mean, honestly, it's basically high settings and we're actually able to run the game pretty smooth. Now you could go to, um, you know, just non-fancy graphics and you could always lower the resolution if you really wanted uh, more than 30 FPS. But right now we're actually kind of locked near 30 FPS at times we get, you know, boost where it's a little bit higher. But of course with a game like Minecraft, you're using a lot of CPU, especially when you're rendering chunks in and whatnot. So you can also lower your render distance down. So we actually just went in and turned off VSync and we're actually getting like over 60 FPS now. Um, that doesn't mean we won't still have dips when we're loading in chunks and whatnot, but it's actually pretty impressive. This 3500U with its four cores and eight threads and the Vega graphics are actually able to run this really well. The laptop itself really isn't incredibly loud. I mean, you do have the fan spinning up a little bit and you can, you know, you can feel it putting out some heat towards the bottom, but really this thing overall seems like it's running relatively cool. All right, so we know that this thing runs Minecraft really well, so let's go ahead and switch over to the next game. All right, guys, the next game we are gonna be testing is the Master Chief Collection. Now, we did test this on that other budget laptop that we used, and well, the performance was lackluster. So what we're gonna be doing is running this thing at 1080p full screen. We are gonna be running with a frame rate limit off, so we don't have to deal with that. We'll probably just run on the original graphics for right now, and then we'll probably bump it up afterwards to see if there is uh, any sort of performance loss by running the enhanced graphics. So let's go ahead and change this and then we will go ahead and jump into a match. All right, guys, we are in the Halo Master Chief Collection playing SWAT. Oh God, we are running at 1080p right now and we're actually getting somewhat similar numbers. It's actually a little bit better at 1080p than the other system was. This is normally the results we were getting before when we were running at 720p on the other laptop. Um, I'm not sure if this game just does not like integrated graphics or what, but um, it's performing decent. I mean, if you want to have like similar results to a console, I mean, this is what you're going to get. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tunnel vision and see if we can actually kill somebody. All right, guys, so now we dropped it down to 720p just to see how much smoother it would get. And it looks like we're going to get close to a constant 60 FPS at 720p, which is really what you're looking for if you're going to play this game. Doesn't make us any better at hitting shots, but, you know, it does get it higher up there in terms of FPS. Um, again, the Vega graphics are good for light games. This is just a slightly upgraded version of the Vega 3 graphics. So if you do want to play games like Minecraft, it does perform a lot better. And in games like this, you could actually hit 60 FPS on 720p. So pretty impressive in terms of uh, actual numbers out of the box. Dude, like where are the people even at? <laughs> this guy has 18 kills in their leaderboard. I got him. Hey, we got a kill. All right, I'm just That's I'm it. calling it there. All Actually, right, guys. The over now. We got Ma one kill. One kill. Master yeah. Chief Collection is more than playable at 720p. Might want to lower the settings a little bit. Really not a whole lot of control you can do in this game. But, you know, if you want to play 720p, it might actually work well for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be playing CSGO as the last game. Uh, might as well just run it on high settings, 1080p full screen to see what the best possible result is. Keep in mind, if you're running these APUs, you need to run these on full screen because you actually lose a lot of performance by running window mode with these APUs for some strange reason. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into a Dust 2 Team Deathmatch and see how this thing performs. All right, guys, so right now we're running on high settings, and it looks like high settings is pushing it just a little bit. Playing CSGO at under 60 FPS is not ideal. So what we're gonna do is just have Jackson run through this casual round real quick, and then we'll probably switch to Team Deathmatch and try to lower the settings to low settings um, and see if we can get an achievable 60 FPS. 
All right, guys, so right now we have the settings set to medium. We're not really getting that big of a difference. It might just be worth cranking it all the way down to low and just see how high the FPS actually goes. But medium settings are more around the 40-ish FPS mark. Um, it's playable, it's not the most ideal. Um, one thing to keep in mind with some of these laptops is there could be like a power profile or something that's built in that could be limiting performance. I know the Acer actually did relatively well at this. Um, I'm not totally sure. So we're gonna try lowering maybe to all low and see, um, and just kind of go from there. All right, so what we did now was actually change the power profile to balance, which isn't the default one that comes with the AMD drivers. Um, and well, it is performing a little bit better, even though we got just dinked in the face. Uh, it's getting around 50-ish FPS, so I mean, that's a little bit better. Casual is probably not the best game choice for this benchmark run, but um, I mean, CSGO is decently playable. It's not the greatest experience, but if you do run all those settings, I'd imagine you'd probably be really right at 60-ish FPS. Um, so this thing is definitely very capable. All right, guys, one last thing I wanted to talk about. We're actually back in Minecraft because that game ran really well and it was the first game we benchmarked. So obviously we did all these benchmarks in a row, which means we had a lot of heat buildup because we did have the laptop sitting on a flat surface. And as you can see, we're back in Minecraft getting, you know, about 80 to even 90 FPS at times. Um, and the GPU temperature is about 70 C, which is also about the same temp as the CPU. Now for a Ryzen CPU, this is gonna be I would say thermal throttling range. We noticed when we were at 80 degrees Celsius and when we launched the game, we were only getting somewhere between 20 to 40 FPS, but then now that we put a fan behind it and lifted it up a little bit off the desk so that we can actually move some air through this thing, we're down to about 73 and we're also getting close to 100 FPS at times, which I'm sure if we got the temperature even cooler, the CPU percentage would go up because it would actually utilize it more. So right now the laptop's just basically doing its best not to kill itself with uh, thermal overload. So uh, we do recommend if you're gonna be using this for gaming, definitely get one of those laptop cooling mats. You can find them on Amazon all day, which we'll probably put some in the description down below if you guys would like to buy one. And that'll help keep this thing nice and cool to actually be able to get some high FPS in games. One more thing to mention is, since this is like a no-name brand, there could be a good chance that the thermal paste application is actually really poorly done. So if you really wanted to dive into the laptop, not sure what kind of warranty you might get, that could be something to look into, but just on a first glance over the laptop, there's really not a ton of ventilation on the thing. So um, they really went for the whole thin and light design as opposed to great cooling. So maybe that's something you look into, but overall, I think just getting a cooling mat or a fan setup or something to make it run a little bit cooler would be the best for it. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick and give you our final thoughts. So we just did three pretty fun to play video games on this laptop and honestly they all ran pretty well. Minecraft actually did exceptionally well. We did show you guys that there is a little bit of a thermal issue with it for gaming which honestly you're going to see with almost every laptop. Like it's just it's really hard to cool a laptop during gaming especially when it's not designed for gaming. So as far as like normal office tasks goes having a ton of internet tabs open and whatnot it can handle that stuff all day perfectly fine. So this is definitely a laptop that we do recommend over something like the Acer if you're comfortable with getting a brand like this or you have access to a Walmart where you can actually get this thing for the $329 asking price because at that price, honestly, it's a no brainer. It is so small. It's such a good thin and light laptop that you can take anywhere with you. You could probably do some video editing on this. You could do a lot of different things um, with the four cores and eight threads from the 3500U. So honestly, for the price, it's a no brainer. There are different colors too. So don't worry if you don't really want this one, you can get a different color option as well. But um, this is a great entry level laptop that can do some higher end things too. So overall, it's definitely a a plus recommendation from us and if you do want to purchase it links down below probably not an affiliate link because we don't have a deal with walmart but if you do want to buy it links down below and if you want to buy any of the other stuff we mentioned that could go well with this laptop links down below those are probably affiliate so we hope you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and as always we'll see you guys in the next one Goodbye.